prior to Abbey Road, we had recorded an album called Let It Be. And Let It Be eventually was issued after Abbey Road, but we weren't to know that at the time. And the idea for Let It Be was a good one, but it never really materialised. The basic idea was that John and Paul and George should write new songs for the album that were going to be really good and we would vet them and make sure they were good and maybe do demo tracks for them. But the actual album itself, we thought, let's make a live album. We'd never done this. For the first time, let's make a live album of original music before an audience. And that was what we wanted to do with Let It Be. It, the idea founded because we couldn't find anywhere which would take an audience in England in the middle of winter, that an audience big enough that was. And as usual, the Beatles wanted to do everything at an hour's notice, and you can't organise these things very quickly. And they also wanted to record in their own studio at, uh, in Savile Row, which was not equipped properly. So in order to accommodate that, I had to move in a lot of equipment from Abbey Road into their studio. And the designer, Magic Alex, had forgotten to put a hole in the wall for the wires to go through. So, I mean, all those silly kind of things. And the studio wasn't ideal, but we worked in it. And we had the further irritation of um, being followed by a camera wherever we went. So that during all the recordings, there were handheld cameras being over my shoulder, being shot and so on. Every word was recorded forever. And the, f the feeling between the boys wasn't good. There were fights, there were rows. Yoko was always there. It was an un unhappy record. I was losing control. I, my voice wasn't heard. And I got very dispirited indeed. And John's demands that we should make this an honest album, none of your production rubbish, he would say. I don't want any editing. I want everything to be live. Um, you, all we do is record it, and you tell me when it's right. And it got very tedious because it wasn't right. You know, I would say, that was 19, John. There was a bit of a fluff on the bass guitar. Easy to edit. No, we're not doing any editing. OK, we'll do another take. 20, OK, 21, 22, 23, never right. Vocal's not so good in that one, OK. 53, you know, it got really, really tedious. And the album, in the end, because of this stricture, was not a perfect album. So the only way I could think of making something out of it was to make it like a documentary. I was working with Glenn Johns, who was a very good engineer, who was a producer now. And we agreed that we would put it in, warts and all, put in the mistakes, put in the count-ins, put in the chit-chat in between takes, and make it like a, like a private eye dropping in on the Beatles. And that was how I made the album. But then after Abbey Road was issued, Paul rang me up one day and said, do you know what's happened to Let It Be? I said, no. He said, they've taken it to America and they've given it to Phil Spector, and he's been doing all the things that John said he wouldn't do, and they've put heavenly choirs and all sorts of soupy strings on, on it, on my songs. He was furious. So was I. And that was how I let it be evolved eventually. And then the final snub was that um, EMI said, well, we wouldn't have your name, my name, on the album, because Phil Spector had now produced it. And I said, well, look, why don't you, let's have a compromise. Why don't you say, produced by George Martin, overproduced by Phil Spector? <laughs>